Good morning. Pastor Mark Driscoll here with Prepare the Way Ministries. Glad to be with you this morning. Let's spend some time in the Word of God and in prayer. We're here talking about um, the oil change and what, what I mean by that. In Psalm 92, it says, You have given me fresh oil. The oil meaning the the Holy Spirit living in our lives, the, the presence of God, the power of God, and that God came in Jesus to give us new life and to give us new hope and new joy. And that joy comes from the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And that comes through repentance and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, but even as Christians, even though we've received him, sometimes we need an oil change. That doesn't mean we need a new God. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the Spirit. That means we need to change the oil of our own self-effort, the oil of our own uh, religious pride, the oil of our own uh, ways of doing things and we need to change that out and let Christ fill us and let his will and his way and his purpose rule in our lives so that's when, I, when I'm talking about the oil change I'm not talking about changing anything with God he's, he's fine like he is but sometimes it's the way I'm approaching him that needs to change it's the way that I'm relating to him that needs to change and so I want to talk with you today from that let me pray with you and then we'll, be, we'll begin Father thank you uh, for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and for your strength. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have everything that we need. Everything we could ever need is in you, Lord. It's in you, knowing you personally and following you and trusting in you. And Lord Jesus, I pray that during this time you'd help me to communicate that, that you'd help me to know that in my own heart and communicate that to those who listen. Lord, prepare the hearts of my hearers today. May they hear and respond to you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're in Isaiah, uh, a very popular passage quoted by Jesus when he went to Nazareth. Let me read it to you and then I'll, I'll begin. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they might be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. You know, um, when I was a little kid, one of the memories that I had way back in the 60s and set in early 70s was whenever we would go to the gas station to fill in, they had full service. Mom or dad didn't even have to get out of the car. They'd sit in the car, they'd pull up, and there'd be a, a guy standing there with a the pump. He'd fill it up, and he would also say, can I check your oil? And if they wanted an oil check, they'd, he'd check it to check the levels to see if we needed an oil change, to see if the oil had gotten old and how it needed to be renewed. Maybe we need something else. But he would always say, can I check the oil? You know, now you have to pretty much, you're on your own. You pretty much make sure you, you get that done. Um, but I thought that was, that's just one of those childhood memories that I, I don't think I'll ever forget. And um, it makes me think, honestly, of the Lord Jesus Christ. It makes me think of him. Why? Because he's the one that looks into my heart. And he says, let me, let me check what's going on in your heart. Can I check your oil? In other words, can I check the quality of your relationship with me, your faith, your experience with me? Let, me? let me check that for you. The Holy Spirit lives in us. He's the holy oil of God. He's the one who fills us with power and with strength. He's also the one who searches our hearts to help us to know you know, where we are with God. And sometimes we can get so busy. It's just like a car. You can get so busy driving and traveling and going about your business and going here and going there, trying to get to soccer practice, trying to get to the store, trying to get to church, trying to get to work, trying to get back home, trying to get to school, that you don't stop and check the status of the engine. You don't stop and check things. And, you know, and so I think spiritually we get like that. We get so busy with life that we don't stop and check where we are with God. And I think it's an important from time to time 
to check, you know, where, where how's my experience with God? Am I am I walking in faith? Am I enjoying my life with God? Am I walk, living dealing with things that need to be dealt with? Am I ignoring some things that need to be ignored? Jesus is the one who checks that for us. He he wants us running right. He wants us running on all cylinders. He wants us living by faith and in joy. And when I read Isaiah 61, I think about how Isaiah spoke of a time when Messiah would come. And this is a prediction of Messiah, who the Spirit of the Lord is on him. And he is, was anointed to do what? To bring good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to the captives, the opening of prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And, you know, all these kind of things. And then it says down in verse 3, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes and the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit. Wait, let me back up. I'm skipping myself here. It says to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning. The oil of gladness instead of mourning. Now in the Old Testament, that was referring to the Messiah who would deliver his people uh, from l grief, lament, oppression, from uh, those kinds of things. And so here's the thing. Jesus came along years later, and he stood up in Nazareth, in a synagogue in Nazareth, and he read Isaiah 61. And he said, this day this is fulfilled in your hearing, that I'm the guy, I'm the one that brings the oil of gladness instead of mourning except jesus was coming not just to bring that to israel but to bring it to all the nations to say to everybody who needs him listen you don't have to live in hopelessness you don't have to live in despair and in brokenness and you know when we look around the world and we look around all that's happening around us and we see all the ways and reasons that people have to people are searching they're searching for hope they're searching for peace they're searching for something that makes life worth living. And Jesus says, you know, I, I've, come to, I've come to do that. I've come to bring that into your life. Uh, you, you're not going to, you know, many people live in the oil of wealth. They think if I just get enough money, I'll be okay. But that, that won't take you very far. Many people live on the oil of pleasure. I just want to have my fun. I want to. I want to do the stuff that I want to do. I don't want to. I want to do pursue pleasure, and 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 that will burn you out eventually. And sooner or later, you're going to need an oil change because that's not going to. So you can't sustain that forever. Others use the oil of religion. Um, if I could just be good enough, if I can just be religious enough, I can go to church enough, I can do enough good deeds. That's, that's a religious attempt to, to fill your heart with something that sounds and feels spiritual, but you're still missing the point. Jesus didn't come to earth to give us religion. Even though Christianity has a religious aspect to it, of course it does, and that's okay. And, and that's important. We, we use that. We need that. But he came to do so much more than that. He came to give you joy and hope and peace through a relationship with him. It's through knowing him in a personal way that my captivity is taken away. That my eyes are being, you know, Jesus talked about, he said, I've come to preach good news to the poor. I've come to open the eyes of the blind. I've come to set captives free. I've come to proclaim freedom to the prisoner. I've come to proclaim forgiveness for those who are in sin. I've come to bring all the things that kill joy and hope. And it's through him. And so here's the thing. Are you walking in a relationship with Jesus? I'm not asking you if you're religious enough. I'm not asking you if you're a good American or a good Democrat or a Republican. I'm not asking you if you got enough money. I'm not asking you about your skin color or your gender. I'm asking you this because all those things are you know, superficial things. They're, they don't bring real life. They're not what life is about. Life is about knowing God, your creator and being in right relationship with the one who made you and redeemed you through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus came to say, look, I'm here to give you the oil of gladness instead of the oil of mourning. I wanted to ask you to check. Can, he, he would come up to you today, just like he did when I was a little kid. The mechanic would come up to the window and, and ask my mom or dad, can I check your oil? Jesus 
is the mechanic of the soul and he comes up to the window of your life he said let me check your oil for you let me check so what what have you been running on in other words what have you been running on and is it is it working just here's the question is it working the only thing that's going to work is a faith relationship with jesus christ and it's through daily knowing him following him obeying him trusting him uh, living out his values, living out his teachings, and and allowing him to transform your life and teach you how to live with his kingdom mindset instead of the kingdom of this world. Jesus came to do that. He came to give that. And so, uh, you know, a lot of people live on the oil of feelings and emotions. I just got to feel God. I just got to feel God. You know, I've had times of feeling the presence of God. And then those are great times, and they're wonderful, but that's not what it's about either. It's about a personal relationship of faith. It's a relationship of faith and obedience. It's trusting him and living by his teachings, trusting in his spirit, loving people, loving God with his power. That's the oil that he wants to give you. That's the oil of gladness. Real gladness comes through that kind of life, through knowing him, being born again. And he would say to the Christian, many times we Christians, we, we've got Jesus, and at one time we were living in the Spirit, living by the oil of gladness. But then we got caught up in other things. We got distracted, got distracted by duty, got distracted by legalism, got distracted by our own pursuits, our own ambitions, got distracted by hurts that people have brought on us and relationship problems. You know, we get all that kind of stuff. It kind of, it's kind of like the impurities in the oil in your engine, and it kind of clogs up things, right? And sometimes we get we get away from that. So... He says, let me check your oil. How are you living? He said, peace I give to you, my peace. Not the peace the world gives. Let not your heart be troubled, let it be afraid. Are you walking in peace today? That's part of the oil of gladness. Are you walking in his peace today? He said, uh, if you abide in my word, you're truly my disciples. And you'll know the truth. The truth will make you free. Are you walking in freedom today? The oil of the freedom that comes with walking with Christ. Are you walking in that freedom today? Are you, and that's connected to truth. Freedom and truth go together, don't they? And so the Paul says, if you live by the Spirit, you won't fulfill the desires of your flesh. That's a victory over sin. That's a victory to live a holy life, a pure life, a life of joy and hope and freedom. The devil's never going to give you any joy. He might give you a thrill, but he'll never give you joy. Only God can give joy, and that comes through walking with him. That's what Jesus came to bring. That's why he goes to Nazareth and he quotes this very passage. He says, this day, look, here it is. I'm the guy. I'm the one that checks your oil. He said, come to me, all of you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, and you will what? Find rest for your soul. Do you need rest in your soul today? Are you worn out? Are you tired of it? Are you tired of everything? Tired of everybody? Come to him. And it's simple. It's not complicated. It's not some big cosmic deal. It's just come to him like you are and say, Lord, I just need your help here. I need you to give me your peace. I need you to show me how to live. I need you to, to walk with me and teach me through your word and through relationships with other believers. Teach me how to live. I need you to show me your way. And I need you to give me joy because I'm walking in stuff that's just not gonna not delivering. It's not joy. It's not hope. And And, you know, sometimes we just have to get tired of it. We just have to get tired of the nonsense in this world, tired of the crazy nonsense, and say, you know, Lord, I need I need an oil change. I need an oil check. Would you? I, I'm, are your levels full? Here's some things to check. First of all, are you walking in peace? Bottom line, I'm not asking if you can fake it. Are you walking in peace? Number two, are you learning from His Word? Are you growing in it? It's not like a checklist of this is what good Christians do. No, it's these are things that help you grow and help you find that peace. Next thing, are you talking to him? Just are you talking to the Lord, listening to him? Are you in communion with God, in fellowship with God? And and how are your relationships with other people? Are you loving your neighbor? Do you care for your neighbor? Are there people you're holding grudges against? Do you need to forgive somebody? Do you need you know, there's so many things like this that the Lord would say let me. Here's the thing. In, in Isaiah, it says, "Come, let us reason together," says the Lord. You know, I believe that the Lord would love it if you would just sit down with Him sometime and just talk to Him. 
I believe you just talk to him. And you don't have to be fancy about it. You don't have to be, you know, real complicated. Just talk to him. And just say, God, how, what, do you, what do you want me to do? What, what's going on in my life? What, what, do you, what do you want to bring to my mind that I need to deal with? God, how can you guide me in my, in my job, in my family? Those kind of things. I just want you to know Jesus is here. And he loves you. And he's calling you to turn to him and trust him. He's calling you to stop going after things that aren't satisfying your soul. I mean, just running after things that don't work. He's calling you to stop trying to earn his love by working yourself to death for the kingdom of God. Just love him. Just trust him. It's so simple. It's so clear. He wants to check your oil today. He wants to check your oil. He wants to check the level of your joy, the level of your peace, the level of your hope, the level of your love, those are the things that matter in life. And Jesus brings those things if we'll trust in him. So today, I want to challenge you just to spend some time with the Lord and let him, let him do an oil check. Ask him, Lord, am I walking in joy? And if not, you know, Jesus wants to give it to you. In John 15, he says, these things I say to you that my joy might be in you and your joy might be full. Now you go back and read John 15, say what these things are that he said, because those are keys to joy. Uh, abiding in his word, walking with him, prayer, loving people, th those kind of, that lifestyle of pursuing God, pursuing things that last forever. That's where you find your joy and your hope. And in loving people, you know, just there's people all around you that just need love. We've got enough division, enough anger, enough hostility. Let's just go after people and love them like the way he did. Friend, thank you so much for being here. I want to invite you right, right now just to pray with me. Lord Jesus, thank you for this time. Thank you for these that are listening. Lord, I pray that you take your word and work into our hearts. Lord, you have given us the joy, the oil of joy, the oil of gladness, instead of the oil of mourning. Lord, we want to trade in the despair and the depression and the sickness and the sadness of this world. And we want to get rid of that. And we want, to, we want to fill up on the love of God, the presence of Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Lord, help us to walk in gladness. Help us to walk in joy today. Help us to stay connected to you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, friend. Go in peace.